So let's take a quick example. You have a new switch and you want um, to replace an old switch with this new switch. How do you go about it? And this is a question for discussion. Um, and you need to think about um, how you do it. Would you just unplug the switch and plug in the new one? Which steps would you do? Would you link the two switches? Would you try to copy the configuration? How would you make sure that both switches can work at the same time while you move nodes from one to the other? So these are things to think about. So let us look through a longer example. We have a flat network on the left and we want to migrate from that onto three new subnets for example, wired, wireless, and guest inside the new setup. And the rest of the network will remain on the old flat network. Some details is before you have the core switch inside the NOC, and then on the remote building, you have the distribution switch, possibly with some end nodes, and then you have edge switches, each of them with end nodes. And you have a single VLAN which spans the entire campus. Uh, it might even be VLAN 1, so you haven't specified any VLAN, so it's a default VLAN. So step one is you create the new VLANs inside the core, and you create a spare access port, and connect your laptop towards it, and test all functionality. For example, do I get a DHCP address? If not, you go and check the DHCP server you check the DHCP relay configuration, you go and check the routing, you go and check access to printers, you go and check access to servers. So in this case, we're using VLANs 11, 12, and 13. So you set an access port 11, you test all of these things. You set an access port to 12, you test all of these things. You can even use the same port and just keep changing the access port. So you need a spare port that you can use to test inside the core. Now the rollback plan for step one is to undo the changes on the core switch. So for you to implement this rollback plan is you need to have a copy of the configuration before you start making any changes so that you have a reliable reference of how you started. If you do not already, you should have rancid or oxidized on your network to back up these changes automatically, but also you should keep your local copy before you start making changes. Once those tests are working, you can now add the new VLANs onto the trunk. So you can create new VLAN interfaces. You already will have created VLAN interfaces um, like VLAN 11, VLAN 12, VLAN 13, or you might have sub interfaces on a particular interface or whichever way you do it. And then on the trunk, you'll have to tag them 11, 12, and 13. So, and then on the distribution switch, you will need to change the port from access to trunk and you add the new VLANs. Now, this has not really changed how the old network is running, so it shouldn't break anything, but you should check and make sure that everything is working before you continue. Now, you have what choice to make. The first one is to run the old VLAN untagged together with the new VLANs tagged. Alternatively, you can change the old VLAN to tagged on both ends, which is a bigger change, but it may be easier to understand. Both of these work. The problem with running it untagged is it's likely inside VLAN 1. So you usually want to make sure that the old VLAN is a specific VLAN that you know that this is the old VLAN, 999 or 666 or whatever. But you need to do something which you're comfortable doing so that you can understand the configuration. At this point, you're just configuring the link between the distribution switch and the core switch. So clients should not be affected yet. So the rollback plan is to revert these small config changes. Then you now extend the VLANs to the edge switches. So you already have the old VLAN, and now you extend the new tagged VLANs. If you have decided to tag the old VLAN, you can tag it as well on that trunk port between the edge switch and the distribution switch. 
Ideally, nothing should break at this point because everybody on the old VLAN still has access to everything else. Now, you need to test at different points, um, every point where you have an access node. So if you have some access nodes inside the distribution switch, you connect to it and test as you tested in the core switch. You set that access port to VLAN 11, then to VLAN 12, then to VLAN 13, and you test everything, DHCP, routing, access to servers, printing, all of these. And then you test in each of the edge switches by setting your access port to either one of these VLANs and test to see that you get, you get a DHCP address, routing works, you can reach the internet, and whatever resources. Then you now reassign the edge ports one at a time. So you're controlling the interruption to service so you know who's being affected. So when you reassign the edge port, it means you're assigning the clients to the new VLANs. So the ones which are for VLAN 11, you assign them for VLAN 12, you assign them like that, but on a port by port basis. Then you can move all the remaining clients. The clients need to notice a link went off and came on before they will read DHCP or they'll wait for 10 minutes or whatever you sent as your new lease time. If you do a five second shutdown on the port and bring it back up, then it can help to force the clients to try to read DHCP. Then if you notice there's a problem with a client, you can roll it back to the old VLAN while you figure out how to fix them and then you continue with the rest. For important devices, you have to make sure in, in the DHCP logs that they've come back, things like the network printers and other devices that might be important on that LAN. Next step is to renumber the switches. So you need a new management IP addresses on the appropriate new VLAN for management. Um, the default gateway will change. Um, try and not lock yourself out. It's easier to do it with a serial console. You could decide to do this earlier before moving the clients, like create the management VLAN, um, because usually you create a VLAN to separate your control traffic from your user traffic. Once you're done moving, you now need to check that there's nothing on the old VLAN IPs. There are very many tools that you could use. Uh, you could use Wireshark, plus Nmap or Angry IP Scanner. So basically you connect a laptop onto the new VLAN, uh, but it's configured statically with an IP address on the old VLAN range. And then you do an Nmap and see if you get anything listening. If you discover devices, then those devices have static configuration and you can go and change them to DHCP on that range and until you find there's nothing listening. When you're done and you've fixed and there's nothing else listening on those old IPs is when now you can start removing the old villain. And here if you had tagged it as a different villain, then it would be easy to remove it from the trunk port as opposed to how do you remove the native villain. So you can remove it from the core switch, the distribution switch, and the, the port going to this particular distribution switch. The rest of the network stays the same. And then you do a final test after removing the old VLAN that everything works and everybody is, has connectivity. So as a summary, these are lots of steps, but each one is easy to roll back. And once you've done that step, you can go to the next with confidence that you've done the previous steps correctly. And if there's a problem, it's with this new step that you have introduced. There are a lot of tests that we do at many steps in this plan, but that is to make sure that you know that everything is correct up to this particular step. So you have to plan in advance what the final configuration would look like and the individual steps that you're going to get there. And you always have to know how do you roll back a particular step and you must test each change. If you're monitoring devices with any of the monitoring tools like Librarian MS and things, it can give you extra confidence that nothing has been broken because you'll see the devices come back up. 
or Nagios or whatever monitoring tool that you're using. So this is a summary of how you would migrate something from a flat network to a rooted network. And this is just one building. You'd now have to repeat this for the rest of the buildings on your campus.